All right, so this is our final GIS practicum for the semester, and it's going to be, uh, you know, it's a little bit of heavy lifting today. I won't, uh, I won't lie about that. Um, where we're at, uh, we're working on project four. Uh, we did the qualitative pattern analysis last time in GIMP, and we worked with some individual images that were from drone a drone survey that I flew a couple of summers ago. Um, and then I pointed you towards an older video from last year about how to take a regular drone survey. Uh, what I mean by that is the drone flew in a regular pattern and took images at a regular interval so that there was at least 60% overlap uh, between each successive image and between the adjacent rows. And I showed you how to use Web ODM to extract uh, the 3D point cloud data from that using structure from motion, as well as it will create a, a stitched ortho mosaic image. And so, you know, that's a, that's a little bit intense. I'm not making you do that for project four, uh, but we are going to work with the data that was rendered out of that. And we're also going to now introduce a second source of data, which is an actual LIDAR point cloud that we purchased, uh, the project purchased from the Italian Ministry of the uh, Environment, and it covers the same area, that little property called Perestaria, which is a really cool property with a really old, couple of really old uh, structures on there, including uh, the mansion of, a, of essentially a little local land baron. And the current landowner is really nice uh, and runs a organic bergamot orchard there and has given us a lot of really good access uh, to that property. So I just want to thank him for being such a wonderful community partner. Um, so this is where we're at. This is the, the write-up or the directions for Project 4. We did this last time, and now we're working on this. And I just want to say that I did my best to write out all of the instructions here. I'm going to basically follow along with this in the video. So between the right, written instructions and the video, this should cover everything you need in order to get this second part of um, of the project four done. So we're going to proceed in a couple of steps. We're just going to get our data set up and imported. Uh, then we're going to start to filter vegetation out of the raw points data and create uh, digital terrain models out of them. And then we're going to do um, some comparison there. And uh, depending on how long it's taking, I may have to break this particular practicum up into a couple of videos, uh, at most three videos, one for each step. Hopefully it won't take too long. I am going to go a little bit quickly through some of the basic stuff, so hopefully you'll have learned the basics from before. And I'm also going to show you basically from start, this, this practicum is going to go from start to finish as if you're starting a brand new project in grass. We're going to create our locations and I'm going to show you a couple of other useful little tools that we haven't seen uh, yet. And so you should pay attention to the video in those parts because this is kind of like uh, encapsulates an entire workflow all in one together. Okay, so enough preamble, let's get going. Um, over here I have my, um, just a little working directory and I've downloaded the three files that we need. We need the drone orthomosaic.tiff. This is a geo-referenced orthomosaic that came out of web ODM. Here I have drone point cloud dot XYZ. Now, by default, Web ODM will output an LAS file, which is a, a, a compressed binary format for large point clouds like LiDAR. And I used a little free tool, a free open source tool, LAS tools, to convert it to this XYZ format, which is ASCII text, plain text. You could open this with a text editor and see, it. and it's just columns and, col uh, and many, many rows of you know, data. So every single point is in a row. And my LiDAR data that we got from the Italian government was in that ASCII format. They had zipped it up, and then I unzipped it. And uh, just raw, it had, it had a lot of uh, weird formatting issues. I'm not entirely sure why. There was a bunch of additional spaces. I think they wanted to use tabs, but it translated in, from Italian to English as spaces. So I actually had to I do a lot of deep editing on this. And that's on the side. I used a little Python script that I wrote to just clean it up and so it's now in XYZ format. And both of these 
uh, at minimum have a x, y, and a z, an elevation com uh, coordinate. The drone point cloud has only that those. The LiDAR uh, point cloud has two additional columns that relate to the quality and the number of returns. Um, but we're going to ignore that for now. We're going to go basically today, we're just going to deal with the basic x, y, z. You have no ancillary information. And we're going to talk about a real basic workflow in grass to get that going. So we're basically, like I said, going to start a project from scratch, which means we're going to get grass started. And I start mine from the terminal by typing grass 78, in this case, for grass 7.83. You might have an icon to double click, um, you know, to get yours started. But the point is you just need grass to start up. And if this is the first time you're starting it up or if you've deleted your previous map set uh, or grass data location, you're going to get this red warning that says no grass location found. And that's cool. We're going to make a new one. And so what I'm going to do is I just hit the browse button and I'm going to go to this working directory that I showed you in the background. And so on my machine, I have it in my teaching stuff for ANT 562 and under assignments, project four, and then I have project four working directory. You can see that's where I put my base data. Now, at this particular point, I'm going to create a new folder. I like to call mine grass data in all caps. It's what it used to be called way back in the day, like grass five. And so I just it's the habit to do that. You could call it pink unicorn for all I care, as long as there's no spaces in it and no dashes, just underscores if you need them. Grass data is easy for me to remember. So I hit create. And at this point, I'm just going to hit open. And it's important if I did that, it won't show me, you know, like it won't say that it found that. And the reason is you have to select that folder that you just created. Otherwise, it won't find it. And so what I will do is go back uh, to my directory that I showed you and where I created it. Uh, assignments, project four, working directory. And then now, as long as that's highlighted and I hit open, it should show up. So no uh, grass location found in there. That's great. We didn't have one. We just created a blank directory. So the first thing we have to do is create a grass location from scratch. Now our data, our data files over here, unfortunately, they don't have any metadata attached to them. Uh, however, I can tell you the metadata right now. The drone data is in uh, already a projected format of UTM, Universal Transverse Mercator, and the part of Calabria, there are part of Italy, Calabria that we're in is Zone 33 North. So because WebODM takes information from the GPS that's in my drone that's attached to all the images and uses that to automatically georectify the point cloud and the ortho mosaic, they are in that format because that's what I had my drone set to. Now, uh, a little fly buzzing around me in the garage here. Um, the LiDAR points, however, were not in UTM zone 33 north. They're actually in unprojected latitude longitude, and both of these are in the datum WGS84. So we, that means we have to create two uh, grass locations. So let's create the UTM location first. So we just hit the new button over here in grass. And since we know we're going to make it UTM location, zone 33 north, it's useful just to name it that so you don't ever have to remember what the projection of this location is. So I'm going to type that UTM Z 33 north underscore WGS 84. This is a naming convention I use all the time. UTM is the CRS, the projection system. Zone 33 North is the UTM zone, because that's important to know. And then the datum is WGS84. So that's good right here. Um, we can just hit Next. And there's a variety of ways that we can read in um, our setup. Now, when we get to the lat longitude, I'll show you how to manually do it. But here we have a TIFF that's georectified, and it should contain that information in its header. So what I'll do is I'll click this box that says, uh, button that says read projection and datum terms from a georeferenced data file. When I hit next, it asks me to select that file. So I'm going to navigate to that directory. And I'm going to select that geotiff right there and click open. 
I'll click next and as you can see it has read in some information from it including zone 33 projection UTM uh, and a few other things including the boundaries and the resolution and that's great because then we'll automatically set my region window to be exactly where the project is located which is pretty easy for us and since we have it already georeferenced why we'll just save ourselves that step in this in this case right here um, and I'll show you again if you don't have that information when we do the line with two longitude one here in a minute so at this point I can hit finish and it says it will be created uh, in the grass data folder and blah 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 so click OK do you want to import the file that you use to create the location that's a convenience so we're gonna say yes and we're gonna hit start grass section we have zone 33 north and permanent directory we're just gonna hit start grass session oh, it's slowly it's taking its time by importing it I'm gonna pause the video okay so the uh, file was imported and I get a little pop-up here that says did it successfully and you set the region from this map so we'll click OK and now we can start grass session and just wait a second and there we go so here we have our you know typical grass display we can just double check our raster map over here and if you open it you'll see that there's actually four maps reason being is that uh, uh, mosaic is a color RGB imagery file with an alpha layer as well meaning a transparency and so grass will break that into its constituent bands so it has one band for red one band for green one band for blue and then a fourth band for alpha so if we show the red band it will show up as a black and white now this is only the reflected red light um, if instead we select the green band this is only the reflected green light and then finally the blue band this is only the reflected blue light you can see they look different now we skipped over in this this semester messing with band manipulations and imagery classification you can go and check the videos from last year or the year before if you're interested in, in that kind of stuff I'm just going to show you real briefly how to make it look in color and there's two ways to do that I'm going to show you the simplest way which is up here instead of the standard add raster map we're going to go to the same one where we add the shaded relief and instead we'll pick the RGB map layer and here we have DRGB and we can pick the red green and blue bands and so here we go red green blue and uh, there's an optional there's a couple of optional things but it's generally just plug and play so we just click OK and now we have the bands put together all of the reflectances and the different uh, you know colors of red green and blue are put into the red green and blue channels on your display and now you can actually see it in in, uh, in color um, just real quick I'm gonna drag this one from before so this is the blue band if you're wondering what the alpha band looks like it simply looks like this it's which place you know which parts are transparent and which ones are not anything in black is transparent um, and it doesn't really do anything for us in grass so you can go ahead and delete that um, and so I'm just gonna remove the layer that doesn't delete the file but it definitely removes it from your view then to actually delete the file I'm gonna go to file manage maps delete g dot remove and there is like a safety trigger uh, built into here called force removal so the absolute safest way to do this is to check first that the file exists and it's the one that you want to delete so you tell it that this is a raster map and then it will let you look at the names of the raster map you pick alpha and if at this point you hit run it will say this map would be deleted but it's not deleted yet because you didn't check the you know force it to delete flag so that's a good check to make sure it's going to delete the file you want to delete and not one you didn't and then go back to the basic tab and hit force removal and hit run now just really quickly here uh, what we could do in this is a pattern search and we could delete more than one file at once so notice that I unchecked the safety <laughs> because I don't want to delete these I would go to the pattern tab then I would go to the file name search pattern 
and I would use star, which is a wild card. It means whatever. And then I could put ortho mosaic star. So as long as the file name, the map name, has ortho mosaic somewhere in the middle, it doesn't matter what's in the beginning or what's in the end, it's going to find those files. And if I hit run, you can see now it would have found all of the files for ortho mosaic. And if I had to check the F uh, flag, it would actually have deleted that. So that's handy if you have a bunch of files that have a similar prefix to them and you just want to batch delete them in one go. Um, the only thing to be careful of is that you have to be sure that they are the only files that have that prefix or infix or suffix that you're searching for. Um, and so if it's just a prefix, you would just put the wildcard behind. If it's just a suffix for it, you would put the wildcard at the front. Or wildcard at the front and if it's an infix like we have here you'd put wildcards on both sides so again a little bit of an aside right here and this is one of those tools that uh, definitely needs a safety switch you know with great power comes great responsibility don't delete all your maps please okay so we've got uh, at this point our ortho photo in here we you could take some time to take a look at this but what we want to do is to bring in our drone points at this particular point. Now the points are in an ASCII text file, um, XYZ, and I'll show you what that file actually looks like. You can try and open this up with a text editor. It's going to take a little bit of time perhaps, and you can see my little progress bar. But that's basically it right here. X, Y, and then Z. Z is meters above sea level. And it only has three columns, so it's pretty simple. It has no headers in it. It has no additional columns. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, to import this file, this is, we're going to use import vector data. And because it's in that text file, we're not going to use the, the regular import tools. We're going to use this special one, ASCII points, or GRASS ASCII format, v.in.ascii. So what we'll first do is on the first page, browse to find that f uh, file. So again, I'm going into my... Project 4 working directory, and I'm finding my drone, drone point cloud dot xyz. Okay, so there it is, and then the name for the output is going to be drone point cloud. Yeah, why reinvent the wheel, right? So that's the basic stuff. Now we have to tell it something about the format because ASCII styles are not standard necessarily. There's a variety of ways that they could be formatted. So you need to tell GRASS what to expect. And so we're telling it right now that it is, uh, these are going to be points and not um, uh, like lines or polygons. And the field separator is the character used to separate out the individual um, columns. And so if you'll recall from our text file, where the file itself here uses commas as the separator. So by default, GRASS believes you're going to use the pipe, which is the straight up and down bar symbol. So if you click this arrow, you'll see a couple of different comma, uh, common ones over here. Technically, you can put any character here and it should look for it. But since ours is a comma separated file, we're going to use commas. And we don't need a text delimiter because we don't have any text. But uh, if you had text, maybe it had single quotes around it, you could put that in here. Uh, and you could search through, you know, the standard delimiters, or you could put your own if, if you wanted to. And then the last thing we're going to do, because there's potentially, I think in this case, it's not quite 2 million points, but potentially you could have millions and millions of points you're importing. Uh, we need to tell it to not try and build a table, because there's no information that it would need in this particular case, so forget building the table. There are some cases in which you might need to build a table. If there was a fourth column that you really wanted to keep, you'd probably need to build the table or use the special LiDAR import tools that don't work by default. You have to have a special version of GRASS in which LAS is compiled and imported that way. But since we don't have that uh, on our versions of GRASS, we're going to do this. Okay. Uh, to save some time, you can check the do not build topology. That's just telling grass you don't need to figure out what the symbology is and when we do that we definitely want to uncheck the add created maps to the layer tree and we probably want to do that anyway because in fact displaying that number of points is going to take a long time um, if you are nervous and you want to make sure the points are imported you can uh, uncheck this do not build topology and check this add created map but be, be, be prepared to wait for an additional several minutes for it to display 
on your computer depending on how fast your computer is. Now we could um, tell it to clip to the current region, but we know that's not going to be a problem for us because our region matches the, this area exactly. And there are no broken lines in ours, so we don't have to worry about that. But if, for example, you know, the last row only had an X coordinate, you could tell it to ignore that and it would just keep going. Um, there's no header lines that it needs to skip, so we're just going to leave that at zero. X is one, Y is two, and here we just need to tell it that the Z coordinate col is in column three. And we don't need any column to be used as the category, so we're going to leave that as zero, and it will automatically assign categories to each point. Um, at this particular point, we're ready to go. Uh, we want to check this last box here on the optional tab, create 3D vector map, so that the Z column actually does something for us since we're not creating a table. Uh, and at this point, we're ready to go. We can just hit run and it's going to do its business. And as long as you've unchecked that don't create topology, this actually goes surprisingly quick. And so you can see here, uh, this particular file only had 710,000 points in it. So it's actually a pretty small point cloud file as far as point cloud files go. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And uh, just so you can see, uh, I'm going to actually uh, see if I can add this. And it may tell me, oh, there's no topology. But it may actually work. So let's find out what happens if we try and display it. Now I may have to pause the video real quick to uh, let this do. Okay, so those are the points there, just to show you what they cover. Um, and you'll notice that they don't cover fully the entire region of the ortho mosaic, and that's simply because um, certain places just didn't have enough recognizable landmarks to put uh, known points, and other places simply didn't have enough overlap between you know, the two adjacent rows or the two adjacent two um, images in front of each other from the drone flight. And so we're working with what we have. These are the points that we actually have. And I just want to point out that this is not the entirety of the drone mission that I flew. This is actually one, just one of the, I think I flew four overlapping missions to cover this entire property. So this is just one of those missions here covering, I believe, the... Uh, far, maybe far western side of the property, if I'm recalling correctly. Okay, so uh, that's just to show you that the points actually exist. You could zoom in on it. It's going to take time to display, so I'm just going to undisplay the points at this moment. So what we need to do now is to bring in our LiDAR points and see how those uh, are going to compare. And we're just going to bring in LiDAR in this region. The LiDAR tile covers a larger region than this but we're going to clip it out just so we're working with kind of a comparative area. But again, if you remember, big problem was that the LiDAR data was in lat longitude format. And so what we need to do is to make a new grass location in lat long, import with V and ASCII there, and then reproject over here. So you can switch, you know, from one location to another from within grass. But I always find it easier just to simply quit and restart grass so that I can get that nice interface at the beginning to do my, my location creation stuff. Okay, so I'm just back over here and I'm going to restart grass. And now you can see it, that's the UTM location we made. We need to create a new lat long one. So I'm going to click new. And here I'm going to call it lat long WGS84. So lat long WGS84. Again, just keep it simple so I know what I'm dealing with. And what we do, there's a couple of different ways. We, if you knew this special EPSG code, uh, I've been doing GIS for a long time. And I used to have a few common ones memorized, but I don't have them memorized anymore. So what I do is I go down to select coordinate parameters from a list. This is a real convenient thing they added in maybe grass six or something. Uh, that has made life a lot easier for most of us. So check that, click next, and then here we're going to pick the projection code. And you can do a, a search here in the description. So you can search, it might not show up for lat long. If I did, if I did UTM, it would show up. Ah, it doesn't do it. So just scroll down to L, I went way past it. And then there, oh, that's because it's LL, latitude, longitude. 
So just make sure that's highlighted. You can hit next. And then it says, do you want to have a datum or just the ellipsoid? So we do want a datum. We want WGS84. So we hit next. And from here, maybe we, now we can, there. So now we searched and we found WGS84 highlight. And we hit next. And then we usually want the datum trans, uh, transformation in place. So we click OK. And so now we have it. Uh, and we hit finish. And we've created that. It's got a permanent directory, so let's start it up. Now, one thing that didn't occur this time because we did this manually is it didn't have a, a reasonable default region set with boundaries. And I believe what happens is it, it sets it to be one pixel, uh, that is one degree by one degree down at the intersection of the equator and the, and the prime meridian. Uh, so when we import our, our points, we just need to be cognizant that the region may not be aligned to it. If we're importing for the first time a raster file, then uh, if we're using a regular import, like um, you know the regular import or import raster data, we just want to make sure that um, we're not clipping to the region when we import it. Now, I believe our import, this one here, does that by default. Uh, let me just make sure. Ah, so it does not. <laughs> you have to go. So import settings, optional, do not perform region cropping optimization. So if you're importing a geotip or something like that, once you have it imported, you can then set the region to match that particular image, which is the proper way to do it. When you're working with vector data, it never crops to the region on import. It's just difference between raster and vector data. So for us, we can just go into our uh, import vector data ASCII points, uh, v.in.ascii, and we can bring in our LIDAR points and not have to worry about it being clipped. So we're going to bring in our LIDAR now. We're going to browse to where we have them. So again, for me, it's in my project for working directory and LIDAR points, Peristeria. And again, we have to set the name of the output map, which is LIDAR points. I'm just going to call it LIDAR points. And the input format is going to be point field separator. Let's just double check that it's still comma. I know that it is, but I want you to double check. So open it up with your text editor, and you can see it's comma separated. And you'll also notice that it has these two additional columns. Now we're going to drop those columns this time. Um, if we wanted to do some, um, some more intensive analysis with this, we could, and it would tell us something about the return, whether it's a first or a second return. We could potentially use that to help us filter out some of the vegetation, but the method I'm going to show you is going to try and do that without that information, and we'll see how successful we can be. Okay, we have no text, so we don't have to worry about that. Under the points, we don't want a table, we don't want topology. Um, here, we could clip to the region if we wanted to, but we're not going to do that in this particular point because, well, we actually don't have the region boundary to clip it to, so we don't want to do that. And then we're going to set our columns, one, two, and then three for the XYZ. Optional tab, create 3D vector, and then uncheck the create map, add created maps to the layer tree so we don't have to wait for the thing to render. And then we hit run. Oh, we have a broken row somewhere in there. Did I do something incorrectly? That's always what I believe I did. Uh, yeah, look at this Z call. What did I do? Number is three, two, three. Header rows to script is zero. Let me pause the video and just see what, exactly what I did. You know, I always run through these things at least once beforehand and they work fine. And of course I do something in the moment. One minute. Yeah, here's my stupid problem. You know, this is something, If you, this is actually a good teaching moment right here. I forgot to set the comma. I showed you that it was commas and then I forgot to set the field separator as comma. So it still was... It was considering as if all of those numbers were actually one field, the x coordinate. So it was giving me an error. So I need to go in here and set this to comma. And then we can uh, hit run 
and it's going to work. Now this may take a little bit longer to import because this is definitely many, 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 many points. So I'm going to hit pause again while this thing is importing and we will be right back. Okay, that didn't take too long on my computer. Um, not quite two million points, so uh, it wasn't so bad. It took less than a minute, I would say. Okay, so my phone. Gosh. So what we're going to do now is uh, we are actually going to close grass again and start it up in the UTM location because what you have to do is to be into the location that you want to bring the data into and reproject it. Instead of pushing it from this into the other one, we're going to pull it from the other one, from this one into the other one. So we can just close grass again completely. And we can restart it. And this time we're going to select our UTM and we'll be in our permanent directory. And what we're going to do is uh, reproject now. So this is a vector map. We're going to go to vector. If we had a raster and we need to reproject, we'd be in raster develop map. But here it's a vector. So vector, develop vector map. And then find the one that says reproject vector map from different grass location, v.proj. And here it is. So the first thing we have to do is select a location that contains the map we want to reproject. And in our case, it's simple. We have, we have two locations in this grass data file folder. So we'll just select lat long, which is where we want it to go from. Now it'll give you a list. You'll be able to see the map sets. We only have one map set. It makes it easy. And it'll give you a list now of the vector maps in that map, ses, map set. And we only have one, so that's easy. So you just have to do it in that order. One, two, three. Uh, essentially, you could give it a different name, but by default, it would just copy the name. And we're just going to, I think we're going to try without checking any of these boxes at first and we're going to check the do not build vector topology and yeah okay so uh, and we're not going to add it to the layer tree so saving ourselves some time and let's hit run and see what happens so you're going to get all of this stuff so these are the number of points I guess that it's processing and looks like it should be running relatively fast enough for me to just wait it out here without pausing. So there it is, our total number and command finished. So if you're paranoid, you could check it at this point. Um, you can close vproj. Um, and I'm going to do that just so I can show you guys what it looks like. And the first thing I'm going to do is select it, uh, LiDAR points, I'm going to just make the symbol very small, as small as possible. And I'm going to hit OK. And then you can see it's going to, this little wheel is going to run for a while. So I'm going to pause the video for sure. And uh, OK, we're back. Uh, that took a few minutes. Uh, and this is all the points. So you can see how, just how dense, how densely packed they are in there. And this is going to be the last time that I display them because otherwise this tutorial would take a very, very long time to film with a lot of pausing. So I'm actually going to remove that from here. And uh, just to prove to you that they're in the right region, I'm going to lay in my uh, ortho mosaic again. I'm going to set up my RGB map layer with my red, my green, and my blue. And I'm going to zoom to it. Okay, so there we are. So hopefully we're all aligned. Somewhere within that big cloud was this guy over here. So at this point, we're actually ready to start our filtering process. 